<laughs> so imagine yourself as a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition, this group over here. Uh, you're putting your canoe up on the shore of the Missouri River, down by Vermilion, or what's now Vermilion. If you local people know where that is, Vermilion, South Dakota. Uh, but your task for the day is to uh, take a long hike up to Spirit Mound. And if you're a South Dakotan, you know where that is, north of uh, Vermilion, a few miles. Uh, your job is to get up there on top of Spirit Mound where you can see everything in the landscape you're going through. So a bird's eye view, I guess, of, of uh, what the landscape looks like from the top of a high spot like that. Uh, you get up to the base of Spirit Mound where the soils are nice and rich and wet and you run into big blue stem and Indian grass and switchgrass that's well over your head. You can hardly get through it as you're getting to the side slopes to get up to the top of the mound. As you're going up the drier slopes, the grasses thin out and it, and it exposes a whole carpet of wildflowers, blue, red, yellow, orange, white, and so on. And you hear a cacophony of birds singing, uh, meadowlarks, uh, sparrows, grasshopper sparrows, uh, long-billed curlews, and so on. And finally, you get, to get up to the top, you take a look out, and as far as you can see, tens of miles, it's unbroken prairie with little brown patches. What are those? Those are small herds of bison. So you're thinking, my God, this is a prairie garden of Eden, for sure. So let's run, advance forward 200 years to the present time. Uh, what's the status of the North American prairie now? Well, regrettably, I have to tell you that there's 1% left. So the 99% that's been destroyed was destroyed mostly by tillage, by cultivation and farming. Small amount of that went uh, to cities and towns and roads. But once, a few years ago, we thought, well, uh, this isn't going to happen again. We're not going to lose any more. How could we lose any more when you're down to 1%? Uh, but just when we thought that was the case, uh, the grain prices went up to $8 for corn. And what happened with that? Uh, we lost 500,000 acres in South Dakota alone from mixed grass and tall grass prairie uh, converted over to, to tillage crops. Now we know that wetlands are part of this grassland ecosystem. It's not just all dry grassland, uh, there's also wetlands associated with it. Uh, those provide a huge amount of biodiversity and some important functions to our landscape, but they haven't fared very well either. Uh, if you've been to Iowa lately, you haven't seen any wildlands. 99% gone from drainage. Western Minnesota, 95% gone from drainage. Eastern Dakotas, about 50% gone to drainage. So uh, the loss of the wetlands and the loss of the prairie makes me think we should put up a tombstone. And the epitaph should say, well, here lies the last few acres of tall grass prairie. Um, but it had a long run. It had 12,000 years of life since the glaciers receded. That's, a, that's enough, maybe, uh, but we had to do it. <clears throat> um, we needed grain to, to eat, we needed to feed the rest of the world, and it has paid off. So let's take a closer look at that. Ecologists have been studying the grassland for now a century, almost, and they figured out, well, it's, it's not quite uh, uh, a write-off. Uh, we've lost some important things. The prairie has provided things for us free of charge. We, what we call ecosystem goods and services. It's a long list. I can't even imagine going through it with you. Top of the list is probably the 50 million bison that uh, used to live on the, on the Great Plains. I want to focus more on soil. Soil is probably the part of the prairie that we still have a legacy effect. Uh, we can still see the signal of the, of the prairie that used to live on our soils uh, in the soil uh, system. It's probably the least understood. There's a lot of stuff going on underground, but you can't see it. So it's hard to study, it's hard to figure out. But one of the most obvious things that you see if you start to dig a shovel into the, into the prairie soil with prairie on it is a huge root system, a massive root system. And uh, that is the, the uh, organism, the part of the organism that's built our soils. Um, some very energetic people decided some years ago that they'd see how many roots are actually in the soil. So they took a square yard of soil, dug down to the depth of the roots, pulled all the roots out, and measured all the lengths of all the little root pieces. And they put them together end to end uh, in a calculation form. And how, how long do you think that single root 
would be 150 miles. Uh, it's hard to believe. 150 miles from Lincoln, Nebraska to, to Sioux City, Iowa, one stretch just from one square yard of soil. Incredible uh, root system. And those roots will go 10, 12, 14 feet deep. So it's the perennial root mass, and these are perennial roots, of course, that built the most fertile soils in the world. Wherever you go in the world and there's been a grassland cover, you'll find the most fertile soils. So the current tillage agriculture that we have here is really the beneficiary of natural soil capital, natural capital, uh, built by the prairies. But unfortunately, we haven't treated it very well, and we've converted our prairie gar garden of Eden into potting soil. It's about all we have left. And it's ironic that we're destroying the very ecosystem that's created the foundation on which our current agriculture and our bank accounts rest. So, given these values <clears throat> and what we know about the prairie now and the value that it has and the things it provides us without charge, how do we make a comeback here? How do we get some prairie back? Well, governments and NGOs have been working on this for generations. I mean, this is not a new idea to try to get either slow the rate of loss or to get some prairie back. <clears throat> but they've been doing it with purchases, like the Nature Conservancy, buying, buying land uh, with easements, uh, paying farmers to keep grass on the landscape or to plant grass. Uh, these have been important. They've slowed the rate of loss in the past. But when we lose a half a million acres in a couple of years, we know this, the, the easement program is not enough. We've got to come up with some other ideas of getting grassland back on our landscape. We need new approaches. Well, there's a new startup company. It's not quite so new now. It's six or seven years old, uh, called Ecosun Prairie Farms. That's a South Dakota nonprofit corporation that thinks the comeback for prairie depends on finding ways to profit from prairie that's restored on cropland. I'm going to move to the next slide here. This was supposed to show you that root system that I talked about. How about that? The Ecosun approach is to, was to lease a 600-acre corn and soybean farm, to a standard tillage farm, and to put the native grass back on that landscape in various mixtures to uh, develop different income streams from that grass, things like hay, grass-fed beef, and native plant seed, and then to market those and end up with an economic analysis afterwards that tells us whether this is profitable. Can we do both? Can we have the prairie back and can we also make a, a living from it? And if we can make a living from it, that might mean that we'll get more of it back because it'll be profitable to do it. Uh, after six years of research, <coughs> doing the business of, of farming and doing research, uh, the, Ecosun, uh, appro the Ecosun result is that the prairie farm is practi practical and profitable. And we can actually make a living and we can also continue to provide all the goods and services that uh, Prairie does provide for us. In 2013, for example, the Prairie Farm produced, um, I've got a slide here, produced about five, produced and sold about 5,000 pounds of grass-fed beef. Uh, we produced and sold 13,000 pounds of, of uh, native plant seed and about 400 tons of hay. And Prairie Farm also now finishes beef for New Agra, which is a startup company that you hear more about in a few, few minutes. And that means that, uh, that, gra that cattle finished here in South Dakota on our farm are actually going to be sold much, in a much wider circle, uh, all the way out to North Carolina, I'm told. So Prairie Economics, or we shorten it to call it Prairie Nomics, uh, can prove that we can both have a healthy environment and make a living from the land. <clears throat> and this opens up new, new possibilities. The experiment was a success. It opens up new possibilities for farming in the Corn Belt. And it could change the rural future of, uh, of our region. Let's turn to the theme of our talks, Reinventing Rural. <clears throat> uh, Ecosun would like to be involved and even to lead those discussions. Uh, the prairie farm that we're working on is about a five or 600 acre farm. We, th we conceive of these farms being smaller and that would lead to a higher density of farms in the landscape and that could lead to repopulation of our rural areas, not depopulation, which has been going on for a century as you probably all know. The bigger and bigger farms, the fewer and fewer people live in the rural areas. This could work in the other direction for us. And it also would involve more products sold locally. 
So calves that are born in South Dakota could be raised in South Dakota, could be finished in South Dakota, and could be marketed in South Dakota. And that's an important thing. Instead of sending our calves to Texas for all of that, let's, let's do it here. Uh, reinventing rural. When I think of that, I think there's some principles. One that I think about a lot is that we're all stakeholders. We may not own any land at all. Uh, we may own a little piece of property in Brookings or something. But we all have a stake in what takes place in our rural areas. We all should be thinking about and do think about the future of that. Is it sustainable? Or is what we're doing now sustainable? If it's not, we probably need to make some adjustments. <clears throat> Any kind of vision that we would get involved in to, to uh, figure out what the, how to reinvent rural should include all interest groups, not just farm commodity groups. We need more from our land than grain. That's a main point of my talk. We need more grassland, we need wetlands, we need healthier streams in our landscape. A target for this reinventing rural could be 50-50. I'll throw that out as a proposal. Uh, half for working nature, like the Prairie Farm concept, and half for tillage agriculture or organic agriculture. <clears throat> The prophet Isaiah said, without a vision, the people perish. And we are perishable, it's quite obvious. Uh, it's late, when we are down to 1%, it's a pretty gonna be a long recovery, a difficult recovery, but I think we need to get started. Uh, my favorite place on the prairie farm is a hill, the closest thing we have to a spirit mound on the prairie farm, where I can look over the landscape uh, late in the afternoon sun and and just hang out for, for half an hour or so. Listen to the birds. The birds I hear then are very much like the list I gave you before. These are the birds Lewis and Clark heard. The plants I see waving in the distance, the tall grasses and, and the flowers, very much the same plants that Lewis and Clark saw. Now, we haven't got all the species back, for sure, but we've got the function back. That's, that uh, prairie, those prairie root system is holding that soil down. It's growing deep. We're getting more carbon. We're getting more nutrient status on, the, on our soil. The soil's coming back. And the water quality is good, the wetlands have been restored, the kidneys of our landscape, which is another word for, for the, 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 the wetlands, are functioning, our water is better, water quality is better, the water that leaves the farm is better. So I feel really good about it, sort of a Lewis and Clark moment on our farm, it's the closest we can come <laughs> to it, I guess. But uh, I get a good feeling about it, and I, I think that the prairie farm concept, uh, I hope, will catch on in the Corn Belt, and so we'll see more prairie farms sprinkled throughout our landscape and we'll begin to get some of these uh, good ecosystem services back. Uh, I've said a lot of words, <clears throat> um, but the take home message uh, for the talk uh, needs to be short. Uh, they gave me 18 minutes to talk, but let's just say they had given me 18 seconds. What would I say? Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's gotta be a simple message. How about seven simple words that I could have just come up here in 18 seconds and given you and it would be essentially the message that I want to give you. And this comes from one of our esteemed, well-beloved poets. I am the grass, let me work. Thank you very much. <clears throat>